Isn't the English language dumb? Think how many words we have with multiple equally correct pronunciations. Think how many times you've seen a word have a random vowel thrown in there for absolutely no reason. Think how many words we have that are spelled exactly the same as some other words yet mean entirely different things. Do you know the letter C? You know how it's completely useless? Because every single sound it makes can be done by the letter S or the letter K? I mean, yeah, when you combine C with H, you get a unique sound for ch, ch, for words like Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. But then you could have the K sound turn into that by just putting KH. It's super broken. Spell Colonel. You know, like from the military, not like a corn kernel. You know, C O L O N E L. Colonel makes total fucking sense. What's your favorite color? It doesn't matter, because whether or not that color has a U in it depends on what region you're from. And even though they're pronounced exactly the same and mean the same thing, they're spelled differently. Pronounce this word right here for me. I'll give you a hint, it's not knave. And good god almighty, pneumonia and pterodactyl start with a P? What the hell? Stupid people are already writing in the comments to defend our rubber band and duct tape way of speaking, and that's fine. I will ignore them because they're going to miss the actual point of this video. It's the fact that English, as well as many other languages in fact, but English is the only one that I speak, is so fractured and broken and diverse and put together from so many unrelated sources that you can speak in an entirely different way and communicate the same exact thing and still be speaking proper English. To the point where not only would it be foreign to someone in a different country, but it could be foreign to someone in a different state. Have you ever thought about the fact that people who speak English in, say, California speak an almost noticeably different language than someone from Texas or New York? I'm not talking about accents. I'm talking about naming conventions, phrases, and slang. About 10 years ago, the New York Times, a shitty, untrustworthy, sensationalist, for-money news publication based solely on the fact that I haven't been featured on them like some other major news publications I know, put out a quiz that linked your way of speaking English to a dialect map that showed where in America you'd be most likely to hear people speak it the way that you do. Since you're all my lovely, handsome, over 18 and consenting fans, you know wordplay and tongue twistery are a strong suit of mine. I play with the English language like a half-frozen mouse dumped into a hungry python's cage right before it moves on to the two-year-old in the family room. As such, I tend to flip how I pronounce things constantly. Sometimes my mother's sister is my aunt, sometimes she's my aunt. But at all times, she's a very nice woman. Sometimes I get comfy in my pajamas, and sometimes it's pajamas. And if there's a formal occasion, I'm in my jammies. Hell, sometimes I pronounce things, and other times I pronounce things. Truthfully, I don't really know why I flip pronunciations the way that I do, but I do it pretty often. Anyway. The quiz covers a wide range of different speaking patterns found in the US, and some of them are downright hilarious. Keep in mind that the question numbers are going to be a bit all over the place since I took this test multiple times to make sure I saw every question, but my results that I show at the end are from my first blind run of the test. Let's get started. How would you address a group of two or more people? You all, yous, you lot, you guys, you uns, yins, you other y'all. This one I could see myself saying a lot of. You all sounds good. You guys, y'all, I've used all of those interchangeably. Use, I think I'd only say if I were performing a bank heist and I'm letting my underling know that he needs to do what he needs to do if he knows what's good for him. But yins sounds like a head injury. It's apparently part of the mysterious and elusive Philadelphia accent, which is one of the most intensely studied English dialects because of how fucked up and specific it is. That's true. You can look that fact up. I would never lie to yins. Oh, look at that. Pajamas and pajamas, like I mentioned earlier. I have a deep sinking suspicion that I started using pajamas because of Tony pajamas from the Amanda show and I just never dropped it because as a kid I distinctly remember saying pajamas but now I say pajamas mostly. Fuck you Amanda Bynes. I hope your drug rehab is going okay. And what really trips me up is other. How else would you pronounce it? What do you call a drive through liquor store? A desperate cry for help. Brew through, party barn, bootlegger, beer barn, beverage barn. None of these to me are good names for a drive through liquor store. They're more synonymous with the location where I'd get my sister pregnant. Especially if there were any inside out spheres lying around. What do you call the night before Halloween? Gate night, trick night, mischief night, cabbage night, 
Goosey Night, Devil's Night, Devil's Eve. Okay, Devil's Trick, Mischief all makes sense. Cabbage Night apparently got started because in old Scotland, girls would steal cabbages from their neighborhood and use the leaves to tell each other's fortunes about future husbands and money. It was an Ouija board that left you with some spoiled salad instead of a wasted $20 and an everlasting night of embarrassment when you find out the mystical six-dimensional ghost caller is actually a flimsy piece of cardboard made by Parker Brothers. Cabbage Night sprang about because once the girls were done with their cabbage Miss Cleo conjurings, they'd smash the rotting cabbages on their neighbor's front door. You know, as logic would dictate. Goosey Night came from an old Puritan tradition around the 1600s, where the night before Halloween, in a bid to protect the townsfolk from any sweltering evil spirits, the town mayor would pin down and viciously have sex with a fully grown goose, and the townsfolk watching would stand around and chant, Goosey Gander! Goosey Gander! Goosey Gander! I'm just kidding, I made that up. Best historical records of Goosey Night indicate Goosey used to be a slang term for children who acted really riled up and crazy, which they usually do before Halloween, hence Goosey Night. They should have let me rewrite history because it'd be so much cooler, but what can you do? What do you call a sweetened carbonated beverage? Soda, pop, coke, tonic, soft drink, lemonade, Coca-Cola, fizzy drink, dope. Oh boy. Here we but fucking go. I've heard about this one. This one really boils my piss inside out. Excuse me. This one boils my coke inside out. Because many southern states, in a bid to outstupid each other, use coke as a generic name for all sodas. I get it. You want to call Coca-Cola Coke? By all means. You want to call Pepsi Cola a Coke? That makes sense. But an orange soda is not a fucking Coke. It's not even a cola. Sprite, Dr. Pepper, root beer, grape soda, ginger ale, cream soda, any soda that is not a cola does not deserve the name Coke. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Brand names as generics can make sense. No one searches shit on the internet. They Google it. Lots of people just ask for a Kleenex. And if you're over 400 years old, you've probably asked someone to Xerox something rather than just copy it. But a motherfucking soft drink with no cola elements whatsoever is not a fucking Coke. End of story. Number two, lemonade. Best I could find from research is that this is a holdover from the UK where carbonated lemon water is referred to as lemonade. Okay, first off, keep your goddamn queen-loving, teeth-crooking, tea-drinking slang out of my country, you communist son of a bitch. Number two, the ingredients in an American lemonade, aka God's chosen lemonade, are lemons, water, and sugar. It's not even fucking carbonated. It's not a soda. It does not pop. Its resemblance to Coke, which I already mentioned is a sin against linguistics, are minimal at best. There's no tonic. It's not a soft nor fizzy drink. Calling all sodas lemonade is like going to a Tyler Perry movie when you're white. It's totally fine that you do it, but don't be upset if you get a bunch of weird looks. And finally, dope. Nice try, local police department. You're not fooling me that easily. What do you call the area of grass in the middle of some streets? Boulevard. Midway. Traffic island. Island. Neutral ground. Neutral ground. That slang must come from local army bases. But it's apparently a big saying in New Orleans. And I'm not surprised. Gun violence in New Orleans rose 51% in 2021. Probably because they refer to guns as only options. What do you call the insect that flies around in the summer and glows in the dark? Lightning bug? Firefly? I use lightning bug and firefly interchangeably. Peedy Wally! Peedy Wally! Peedy Wally! I struggled really hard to find why this term even exists, but apparently it's a term brought over from Jamaica. I don't even need to say shit. I'm just gonna say Peedy Wally for about the next 20 seconds and let it sink in. Peedy Wally! Peedy Wally! Peeny Wally. What do you call the rubber-soled shoes worn in gym class for athletic activities? Sneakers, shoes, gym shoes, sand shoes, jumpers, tennis shoes, running shoes, runners, trainers. All of these look fine, albeit a bit specific. I actually say sneakers and I was inquisitive as to why they're even called sneakers. Turns out when sneakers were first made in the 1880s, they were called that because they made no sound when walking, contrasting standard hard-soled dress shoes that most people wore back then. Sand shoes is an Australian slang term for sneakers. At first it was stupid because when I googled it, excuse me, when I internet searched it, I found nothing. 
Amazon even brought up shopping lists for like beach shoes and shit because apparently this is such a small little colloquialism. Then again, I have seen all the Mad Max movies, so I know exactly what it's like walking around in Australia. Sand Shoe is a bit generous. They should actually call them broken glass gasoline and poison stinger shoes. How do you pronounce aunt? Val and ah, uh, to sound like ant. Val and cut, same Val in all of them. Sounds like ain't. I use ah when referring to the general concept of an ant, <laughs> but I use ant when I refer to a specific person. Picture in your mind the general concept of an ant. Just picture it. Cat lady, mid 40s, obsessed with primetime game shows and whatever's trending on ABC. Very likely a smoker. But if not, she has some sort of quirky personality tick to make up for it. What do you call an easy high school or college class? Gut. Crypt course. Crypt course. Bird. Blow off. Meat. Crypt course. Yeah, I guess if you go to an all bloods high school, it makes sense for the crypt course to be an easy class. Bird makes sense on some level. Free as a bird for the birds. There's a lot of American idioms referring to birds and their allusion to cheap, unfulfilling things. Hence why popular American slogan Denny's, the most popular restaurant among the birds. But gut and meat? What the actual fuck? Yeah, of course, this course is so easy. It's a meat course. It's all about meat. It's just the meatiest. I don't get that. What do you call something that is across both streets from you at an intersection? Oh, boy. Where the fuck do I start with this one? Kitty corner, kid a corner, cat a corner, catty corner, kitty cross, kitty wampus. Number one, I say cat a corner. Not catter, cat -a. I guess I'm developing my own slang. Feel free to digest the Hugbees dialect into your natural vocabulary. Give me credit for it and we'll spread a wave of dumb, stupid talk across the nation. Anyhow, what do you think is the logical etymology for these words? Cats? Like how cats cross the street diagonally? No. What are you, stupid? Cats cross the street diagonally, just like dogs, sheep, cows, raccoons, bisexuals, or any other animal would cross the street. It comes from the French word quatre, which means four. Allegedly, this phrase arose because when you have a pair of dice and the spots for the number four on them, they have diagonals. Uh, fuck if I know, but that is where it's, that's where it comes from. But now onto the real offender, Kitty Wampus. I didn't know Discord's cringe factory mascot perfade its way into local American colloquialisms, but it chose a bafflingly roundabout target. Kitty Wampus is a corruption of Catawampus, which is a corruption of Catamount, which is an 1800s term for mountain cat, which in turn inspired the phrase Catamount to mean fierce, destructive, or a boogeyman. So now, we've retrofitted ourselves back to the 21st century and we've got a way to describe crossing the street using less common pathfinding created by people who were too stupid to know how an x-ray works. What do you call the small gray bug that curls up into a ball when it's touched? Not anything really unusual here. Pill bug, doodle bug, potato bug, roly poly, etc. Most of these I could see as a way to describe how the bug looks or what it does, except... Millipedes and centipedes aren't pill bugs. They're entirely different animals. I'd imagine if you chose this for your region's pill bug terminology, the quiz would immediately end and the New York Times would display your regional accent results as incurable moron. What do you call a large motor vehicle used to carry freight? See, this one fucks me up real good because I use almost all of these. I've said semi-truck, I've said semi, I've said 18-wheeler, I've just said truck, I've said trailer truck. I just, I swap words all around. I, maybe I'm an enigma of this fucking baffling word speak that comes out of our mouths. But regardless, Lori is not a truck. Lori is the name of a woman in her mid-40s who smokes and watches ABC obsessively. If you out there have an aunt named Lori who does all those things, I just blew your fucking mind. What do you call the thing from which you might drink water in a school? Bubbler. Water bubbler. Drinking fountain. Water fountain. The water doesn't bubble, does it? It's not carbonated. This isn't a water cooler in your office that gives you a spot to pause for a moment and realize you're suicidally depressed. You know, that big jug that goes when you use it. This is a big metal, barely functioning engine box spewing out lukewarm H2O to complement your playground hijinks. It doesn't bubble. It usually kicks on after you've had some water and goes If that sounds like bubbling to you, I'm gonna karate chop your otolaryngologist in the ears, nose, and throat.
What do you call the large wild cat native to the Americas? Mountain lion, cougar, puma, mountain cat, panther, catamount. Don't you fucking start catamount. And mountain screamer. Mountain screamer is just fucking cool. I'm a big, big fan of naming things after what they do. For example, if you're like watching an old fantasy video and they, they meet the villain and he just stands up and he goes, I am Kragzar, the skull fucker. You immediately know what he's all about. By the way, painter? Painter? It's a cat. What do you call the long sandwich that contains cold cuts, lettuce, and so on? Sub, grinder, hoagie, hero, poor boy, bomber, Italian sandwich, baguette, and sarnie. All of these are all over the place. Also, nice fuck up calling a po' boy a poor boy. They're fucking called po' boys. I've been kicked out of enough Cajun restaurants for trying to set the crawfish free to know that they're called po' boys. Obviously, every one of these has a very specific etymology, and I'm far too busy and lazy to look them all up. So I'm going to make up my own. These names came from the fact that different regions of the U.S. simultaneously invented long sandwiches, and those regions contained fans of naval battleships, gay sex, weird Philadelphia bullshit accents, Dragon's Quest, class segregation, World War II airplanes, being uncreative, stupidly naming a sandwich after the wrong kind of bread, and whatever the fuck a sarny is, respectively. And finally, no joke, the entire reason I made this video. I can't get over this one. It holds a special place in my heart. I love this. I'm going to start using these in my everyday life. I'm going to find a way to work each and every one of these choices in. As I reveal the options, I would love for all of you watching at home to play along and try to guess what's coming next. Unless you've done this quiz before, I can almost guarantee you, you will not be able to predict what America has decided to call this specific thing. What do you call it when rain falls while the sun is shining? Sun shower. Now that's what I call it. That's what all my friends call it. That's what I've heard everyone I've ever met call it. It makes sense. The sun is out and it's showering rain. It makes perfect sense. Let's keep going. The wolf is giving birth. The devil is beating his wife. Monkey's wedding. Fox's wedding. Pineapple rain. And finally, liquid sun. I want to make a prog metal concept album about me having to challenge the sun to a battle to the death. And this right here is my track listing in order, including I have no term or expression for this. That's the instrumental track. What a fun little quiz. A fun little educational lesson into how all over the place our communication can be. If I were a cookie cutter, bland, uninteresting YouTuber, this is where I'd say, oh, leave a comment below on which one was your favorite, but I genuinely don't give a shit. Instead, leave a comment below on any weird, specific slang you've heard of, especially if it's from your area. I want the comments to be nothing but a list of just page of page of strange, unexplainable phrases and terms for things. I want to be even more confused by my own primary language. And finally, my results. Unsurprisingly, as a man who was born in Florida, raised in Florida, and has barely even left the state of Florida his entire life, my English dialect is based in Texas. Well, partner, it was mighty gracious of you to stick around and watch my video majig. I hope you come around and see me again sometime. But I've got to hit the old dusty trail. Because I think I hear someone trying to steal my cattle. Y'all come back now, you hear?